Hi, I'm Rachel White with The Rise Link here with Scott Ellsworth, who is the author of the book, The Secret Game, a wartime story of courage, change, and basketball's lost triumph. So we're going to catch up with Scott here, get a little information on The Secret Game as we prepare to celebrate Coach John McClendon Day for the second time here in the Horizon League. So obviously the title of the book, The Secret Game, um, not so much a secret anymore, but yet I don't think everybody out there knows what The Secret Game is. So can you talk a little bit about what it was, how it was organized? Sure. So the secret game was just an unbelievable event. So in 1944, uh, this is during the height of segregation and Jim Crow in the South. This is, uh, this is 10 years before anybody had ever heard of uh, Rosa Parks or Martin Luther King. Two college basketball teams, one an all African American team for what was then known as North Carolina College for Negroes, now North Carolina Central University, played a game against an all-white team from the Duke University Medical School. Um, they held the gym in a lock, they held the game, they held the game in a lock gym on a Sunday morning when everyone, including Durham's uh, uh, all-white police force, would be in church. And this was an extremely dangerous game that they played, but they, they, held, they held the game, they had it, and uh, it was kept buried for years and years and years. And what role did John McClendon play in making this game happen? Well, he played really a, a key role. You know, the, the origins of the game came through groups of uh, Christian students at both North Carolina College and at Duke University. We're in the middle of the war, but you know, everything in the South is segregated. Uh, segregation laws tell you where you can eat, where you can live, where you can be born, where you can be buried. You know, no blacks are on juries. There are very few, if any, African-American policemen, things like that. Uh, but there are groups of students as we're fighting against uh, the Nazis and the Japanese that are looking ahead and they would like to see us come out of the war and end segregation. So they started having secret prayer meetings together and out of one of those meetings, the discussion came up about which school had a better basketball team. And uh, uh, the North Carolina college students felt that they did, but the students from Duke felt that this Duke medical school team, which had scrimmaged and handily beaten the Duke varsity was uh, the best team in town. So that's where the idea percolated. But in the end, it all came down to John McClendon. You know, one thing to remember about McClendon and basketball in those days is African, there was no television, of course, uh, very few games were on radio, uh, and the African-American colleges were not allowed to play in the NCAA tournament or the NIT. So unless you happened to be in one of these rather small gyms where they were playing, you didn't know how good they were. But McClendon's team was way ahead of everyone else. This was the highest scoring basketball team of any level in the United States that year. And he had really figured out a new modern way of playing, but he did, He told me he didn't know, you know, could they compete with white players? Were they gonna be good enough? And so he wanted to find out. And as I describe in my book, The Secret Game, there's a number of steps that led him to, to giving a green light to the game. And you mentioned, obviously, it had to be kept a secret because of all the risks involved. So what really were the risks to everyone who agreed to participate in this game? Well, I think uh, the risks were very, very serious. You know, it, it sounds crazy right now, but uh, this, the same year of the game, an African-American soldier got onto a, uh, a city bus in Durham, and he didn't move all the way to the back quickly enough. He got into a, a argue argument with uh, the white bus driver. When the uh, when the bus hit the uh, hit the end of the line, the soldier walked off. The uh, white bus driver walked off with a pistol, and he murdered the soldier. Um, uh, it was front page news. There was a trial, but after a uh, deliberating for twenty minutes, the all white jury exonerated the white bus driver for murdering a black American soldier in uniform. So when you cross the color line, you took a real chance. I think it's possible that had the police found out, uh, certainly heads would have been knocked. It's possible that somebody could have been killed. Certainly McClendon would have lost his job. The students would have been kicked out of both schools. These, these were very serious repercussions that they were facing. 
Now they finally agree to play the game. They do play the game. How does the game actually play out when these two teams compete for the first time? Well, you know, here you are, and we think back, you know, McLennan was such a brilliant coach and strategist that his team was going to be ahead of everyone. But this Duke team was really remarkable. Everyone forgets during World War II, college basketball kind of quit being just college basketball. There were all these military teams all over the country. In fact, the University of Arizona didn't play a single college a team all during the end of the war years. They played all these military teams. And these were teams that were stacked with really, really good former college players who are now in, in, in the service for Uncle Sam. So the Stuke team was terrific. They had an All-American. They had an All-Southern Conference center. They had great players. And they came out like gangbusters. And uh, they were ahead the first half. And, and McClendon's team just couldn't put it together. But in the second half, one of McClendon's players, a young man named Aubrey Stanley, who grew up in a tiny fishing village on the North Carolina coast, had this epiphany. And he said, I realized that these weren't supermen like we had been taught all of our lives. They were just men like us. Uh, he started to turn things around, and uh, the second half was all the Eagles. Uh, by the end of the game, North Carolina College beat the team from Duke 88 to 44. Wow, that's quite a score. Um, so obviously looking back on it now, why was it such a significant event in history that happened with this game? Well, it's, you know, again, this is uh, – this is 10 years before the Montgomery bus boycott. This is 20 years before the Selma March. Th this is 30 years before the last school in the Atlantic Coast Conference got its first black player. So this is really, this is four years before Jackie Robinson, you know, desegregates Major League Baseball. You've got black and white college players in the South playing their own integrated college basketball game. So that's, that's an amazing accomplishment of basketball. But I think, you know, there's, there's more to it that too. You know, word of the game, despite the fact that they kept it secret, word of the game leaked out. And um, white college players, many who were in the military prep, for example, at the University of North Carolina heard that there was some new kind of basketball being played at this little black college. And so all that summer, they snuck over in cars and had pickup games and things like that. And, you know, McClendon, had really found the secret to the to the modern game. He's the one who really perfects the fast break. Um, he's the one who introduced full court pressure defense. And he's also the first to, to really introduce a, a serious conditioning program. His players were in better shape than anyone. And those ideas slowly leaked out. And so I think that the game had a huge impact on basketball, but it also had an impact on civil rights activists in the South. I talked to a number who were active in Durham and they told us that news of this game really inspired them. You know, it helped to give them courage to take to the streets and the lunch counters and things like that that they had not done before. That's great. And what did it mean to you to be able to really help shed light on this whole story that obviously was a secret for such a long time or at least maybe kind of only talked about in certain circles? Well, it's certainly changed my life. You know, I'd been been working on a, a, a book about basketball uh, in the 1950s and how the game had changed. And it's the coming of the African-American kind of schoolyard gain, money and television, things are changing. And I, I had met uh, uh, Coach McClendon by chance and I went to interview him and because uh, I was wanted background about his time at the University of Kansas, in the 1930s. And at the end of the interview, he he told me about the secret game and I just didn't believe him. I said in 1944, there's no way that happened. And, uh, but then I became convinced that it was. So this other book I'd been working on for years, it sunk beneath the waves forever. And I was on the, the trail of this new story. It took a long time to do it. I had to find, figure out who the Duke players were and track them down. But, and, and also, as I did this work, I realized what a giant in the history of basketball John McClendon is. He is easily one of the five most important people in the history of the game, and nobody really knew about him. So I wanted to talk about that. He was such an incredible, courageous man. But what I also discovered was studying what happened is there was this whole forgotten generation 
of people in the South, largely African-American, but also some whites who, who fought their own war against de- uh, segregation long before you know, Martin Luther King comes onto the scene. And I really wanted to rescue those people from history and bring them back. So it's, you know, finding, you know, uncovering the story of the secret game and writing about it has changed my life. I've, uh, um, let's see, I've written a couple books since then. So I've been quite busy. That's great. And obviously we're really focused on helping more people learn about Coach McClendon and his impact on the game of basketball. So maybe what are some things or one or two things that you learned about him in this process that you really wish more people understood about him? Well, you know, first of all, anyone who knew him and played for him, you know, to a man and a woman always told me that that John McClellan was the greatest person that they'd ever met in their life. And he's just a key figure. I mean, he was a brilliant basketball mind. He was also, which was funny because he, he didn't even make his junior high school team. He wasn't very good as a player. But, um, you know, he was way ahead of everyone. He was the last student of James Naismith who invented basketball. McLennan was his last student. I mean, that's incredible. And he took ideas from Naismith and used them to create this new modern kind of game. But the other thing about John McLennan was just his courage. He, uh, um, he would never self-segregate himself. Um, and he told me it was so dangerous when African-American black college teams traveled to away games in the South in the 1930s, because you never knew what happened. And uh, he said that he was always prepared to give up his life, uh, if need be, on any road trip, that, you know, that it was, you know, uh, death before losing his dignity, you know, but he was also a kind, gentle man. He was uh, deeply religious. He never met a stranger. Um, you know, he had a way of captivating children and teaching them the game. He's just a giant. And I, I'm so thrilled that the Horizon League is giving him his due because he certainly deserves it. Absolutely. And are there any other like influential, important names that really were active during this period that you learned about through your research in addition to Coach McClendon? Oh, yeah, there, there are lots and lots of them. You know, when I started the book, there, you know, there are rel- relatively few books written about basketball before World War II for that first 50 years of basketball. And basketball goes from, you know, in the early decades, this chess match. I mean, you know, and in a thriller in Columbus last night, Ohio State beat Ann Arbor 12 to 8. I mean, so, you know, they're very slow games. And there were certain individuals who are really pushing to speed up the game to make it more acrobatic, to, to put that all together. But there was also this lost generation of, of uh, African-American uh, young men who end up leaving the South as part of the second great migration during World War II. They end up in housing projects in Chicago and San Francisco, Los Angeles, whatnot. And there are these outdoor courts. And on these outdoor courts, they really start to reinvent basketball. And they're the ones where, you know, all these different kinds of dunks happen and alley-oops and behind the back passes and all that. That's happening at the same time. In fact, some of those players play for McLennan. So, uh, you know, in the secret game, there's a lot of of basketball history, but uh, I can tell you it's a book that, um, you know, readers so far have really loved and it's, it's an easy book to get into. One last question for you. I think this is a tough one to sum up, but how would you describe Coach McClendon's lasting impact on the sport of basketball? I think that Coach McClendon's DNA is in every basketball game you turn the television on and watch or go to see at an arena today. The way that players play in the NBA, the way that players play in the Horizon League, throughout the NCAA, there's a bit of John McClendon there. You know, you see it in the fast break, you see it in the nature of, of defense, but also in the conditioning of the players. Uh, he was, you know, way, you know, in an era where most college teams are scoring maybe 50 points a game, his teams are scoring 80, 90, over 100 points a game just on a daily basis. So he's, you know, he is really one of the makers of the modern game. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today and helping us learn a little bit more about Coach McClendon and everyone be sure to check out The Secret Game for even more of this fascinating story that Coach McClendon really put together.